So in this video I want to talk about how you can replace traditional for loops like this one with in streams. Now in streams are basically just streams containing primitive ints. And the cool thing about in streams is that it has the same wide range of uh, methods to work more functionally and declarative as with the streams. So let's just dive in and see how we can use it. So the most basic method you can use to create an in-stream is the off function. Now what this one allows you to do is to specify different numbers that you want in your in-stream. So we can do 1, 2, 3, 4, and that's an in-stream. Now we can actually print this using the for each. And as you can see by running this test, it is printing our numbers. So that was one way of creating in streams. Now the next way we can try out is the range. So this one we basically specify the first number we want and the last number we want. And that's exclusive the last one. So if we specify 1 to 10, that will print everything between 1, including 1 to 9. So doing a for each. You can see it's skipping that tenth. So we can either then make it being 11, or another thing we can do is use range closed. That will be inclusive, the last number. And there you go. Now the next method we can use to create a, an int stream is to basically say we want to iterate and the first number we want and we can say that we want to take the next number, the previous number, and we want to do that one plus two. Now if we print this, It's printing uh, forever, as you can see, but it's printing every second number. Now the last way we're going to look at is to create an in-stream using the generate function. Now what the generate function does is basically generating based on an int supplier. So we can define a generator that will not base it on the previous element, but purely just create whatever it wants to create. So, so we can make a random one. And if we just add a little limit now to five to not get those crazy infinite loops. You can see we got our numbers and it's random. So that's the different ways of creating in streams. So now we can move on and we can start playing around with these numbers. So if it just remove every, everything that is noise and we just create a range of 0 or 1 to 5. So now we're gonna have 5 different numbers. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now we can start using different methods on this one. And let's start by adding a map. So map basically takes the element when it's processing one by one. It's taking that element and it's applying the function that you um, provide. So let's, for instance, multiply by itself. So we're just going to do a i, i times i. So now you see that we get the number multiplied by itself. And we can continue to use the stream API to do various things with our numbers. So let's just create a filter one as well. So say we want every even number. So now we just got two and four. If we bump the bump the, the, the range a little bit, you can see that we yeah, we're getting just even numbers. So you can play around with this and 
create really nice declarative code. So say you don't want the int stream anymore, you want to have a normal stream. You can easily do that by using the boxed method. So what that will do, as you can see, it's going to run as expected, but what it's actually doing under the hood is if you just copy this out. And as you can see, it's a stream of integers. It's not an int stream anymore. And we can also make it to different types of objects. So we can do, for instance, say we want to just make it into a string. Map to object, that's our number. And let's just let's just keep it simple. And we have our numbers. But as you can see, this is a stream of strings, right? So as you can see, it's really easy to play around and move around with these in streams. So give it a go and see how it works for you. Now that's it. I hope you liked the video and if you did, make sure to subscribe. See you in the next one.